Hi everyone, it's Weiss, and for today's video, I made a tier list of all the books that I read in 2022. Before getting into the tier list, here are the groups I'll be placing these books in. The first one is New Favorite, which means books that I really love. Next is Love, which means books that I love but doesn't really qualify as a new favorite. The other one is OK, meaning books that I'm just in the middle with, as there were a lot of flaws but there were parts of it that I actually liked. Disappointment means books that I was expecting to like, but it didn't end up happening. And Just Bad means books that I hated or didn't really like at all. So now, let's get into it. The first book that I read this year is Dune by Frank Herbert. Dune is a science fiction adventure book about our main character, Paul Atreides. Paul is the son of King Leto, and their family just inherited a planet called Arrakis, or Dune. If you've watched my video about all the books that I read in 2021, then you'd know that I included Dune there. But I'm placing it in this video as well because I still technically read it in this year too. I read Dune from December 21 of 2021 to January 4 of 2022, and I'd it a 4.7 out of 5. It's a great read. The world building is complex and interesting to say the least, and overall it's a pretty great book. I'm gonna place it in the love tier. Again, it is a good book, but it's not necessarily a new favorite. The next book that I read this year is Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo. If you want my full thoughts on this book, I have a book review of this, which is linked down below. I'd rate this book a 4.8 out of 5. Like Doom, this was a great book, and to give a bit of info, Shadow and Bone follows our main character, Alina Starkov, a mapmaker from the First Army. In her country, Ravka, a swath of darkness called the Fold separates the country into two, and Alina unlocks a power that might destroy the Fold. This is a solid book overall, and because of this, I'm placing it in love again. Though I love this book, it was a bit slow at some places, but again, it's still good. Next is Siege and Storm by Leigh Bardugo. Siege and Storm is the second book in the Shadow and Bone or the Grisha trilogy, and it takes place after Shadow and Bone. I'm placing this book in the OK tier. Compared to Shadow and Bone, Siege and Storm didn't really deliver for me. I'd rate it about a 4.4 out of 5. It's not the best Grishaverse book. It's slow at a lot of places, Mal Aretsev or Alina's best friend just acted like a jerk throughout this book, and the Darkling was just weird in general. Like, he appeared in these weird dreams that Alina have about him, and honestly, if Lee decided to trim down those scenes, I think that this book would be much more shorter and better. Like, those moments were just plain out weird to me. The only thing that kept me reading was the addition of Nikolai Lansov and Zoya Nazielensky. Like, I'm not kidding. These two really saved the book for me and lifted the entire mood. So, overall, it's an okay book at best. Next is Ruin and Rising, the third book in the Shadow and Bone trilogy. I'm placing this in love. This was a way better book than Siege and Storm. We have Genya safe in standing up to herself against the Darkling, and we also have the entire battle that Alina had against the Darkling, which are just incredible scenes to read. Despite this though, there were a few things that made me feel pretty iffy at the same time. Like, an example of this was what happened to Nikolai. Yeah, if you know, you know what happened. And then we have this quiet of a weird quote, which is called, I am become a blade which is a tattoo that Mal had, and a really, really weird addition. I don't know where Lee got that, but either way, it's a 4.6 out of 5 stars for me. Next is Vicious by V.E. Schwab. This go into disappointment. Is this a hot take? Well, yeah. V.E. Schwab or Victoria Schwab is a fantasy adventure author whose books I was really interested in, as fantasy is my favorite genre, and the hype surrounding her books is incredible. Like, if I had a dollar for anybody saying that they loved the V.E. Schwab book, I'd be really rich. So, I picked one of her most highly ranked books, and that ended up to be Vicious. Vicious is a book about two college roommates who get superpowers because of an experiment. However, they end on very bad terms, with one of them getting into prison. And now, they're pretty much enemies. My first complaint about this book is the characters. This is going to be a really hot take, so if you love this book, you can just skip a few times in this video to not hear what I'm about to say. So, the characters. We have Victor and Eli, the two college roommates, and the thing that I didn't really like was how unlikable they were. They were so unlikable to the fact that I didn't want anybody to win, and I wasn't rooting for anybody at all. 
I didn't connect with the characters at all, and the mood of the entire book itself was just so bland and sad and angry just in general. All the characters were upset and traumatized by something from the past, and there isn't a balance in the comic relief. Actually, looking back, there was no comic relief. It just felt negative all the time, and I couldn't handle it, so I just ended up dropping this book after chapter 19, I think. Which is just a shame, since this is my first V. Schwab book, so if you can recommend me a good one, let me know in the comments. Next is We Were Liars by E. Lockhart. This is going to just bad, because it was bad. Like, the title itself should have been We Were Bad, because, okay, <laughs> I think it's a bit too far. I'll stop now, so let's talk. We Were Liars is marketed as a mystery thriller book that talks about the Sinclair family, who lives in this very rich mansion, and how the main character, Cadence, suffered this accident that almost killed her. What she didn't know was that this accident was connected to a whole new level of weirdness and mystery. If you're on book talk, then you'd know this book, and this is my honest review of what I feel about it. So one of the main complaints that I have about this book is that it's boring. It's really boring as it just centers on Cadence and her crush on Gat. And don't get me started on the one line that she keeps saying about him. Like, Gat. Her Gat. Because, I kid you not, I got so sick of that line so much. Everything Cadence did in this book was for Gat, who is just the most generic love interest in the entire history of YA. There's just so much pages of Cadence just addressing Gat and her longing for him, which drags the entire plot. And the amount of times this happens just makes reading almost unbearable. I get so bored to the fact that I searched up the plot twist already. And you know what? The plot twist is just weird. There's nothing else I could say about it or explain about it. It's just weird, and I don't think it was worth my time at all. Next is King of Scars by Lee Bardugo. I'm placing this in okay. King of Scars is the first book in the King of Scars duology, and it talks about Nikolai Lansov, the King of Ravka, and how the events of the Shadow and Bone trilogy affected him, Zoya, and his kingdom Ravka. If you want my full thoughts on this book, there's a book review for it in its link down below. From that video, I also mentioned how I was a bit underwhelmed by this book because of a couple of factors, like Nina Zenik's perspective, and how this brought back a character from Shadow and Bone that I didn't really like. I felt these two points were pretty unnecessary, as we had separate series for both characters. But overall though, it was still a worth it book, like a 4 out of 5 stars for me, but it isn't the best. Next is Rule of Wolves by Lee Bardugo. Again, if you want a review of this, there's one link down below. I'm placing this in New Favorite. This book happens after the events of King of Scars, and I would say that it was such an upgrade compared to it. The writing was better, and Nina's perspectives were actually pretty interesting this time. Also, there were a couple of cameos from the previous characters, which was also pretty cool to read, and overall, a pretty great book. Next is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reads. If you're on book talk, you'll keep seeing this book for some reason, and I just gave in to the hype. The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo talks about Monique Grant, and she's a writer in this news company. Things changed for Monique when Evelyn Hugo, an actress from the 60s, asked her to write her biography, and through this, Monique learns Evelyn's life and how exactly Evelyn ended up with seven husbands. So that was a lot to take in. From that kind of synopsis, if this book didn't have that much hype, I probably wouldn't pay that much attention to it. But because everybody was almost shoving this in my feed every single day, I decided to read it myself to see what the craziness was about. If you follow me on Goodreads, then you'd know that I rated it at 2 stars. I couldn't fully in-depth rate it because I didn't actually finish reading it. The first chapters were okay at best. The writing style that people kept hyping up was just, again, okay at best. It was straightforward and less descriptive. It sort of reminded me of Mary Lou's writing style in Legend, but you try to cut down the descriptions and then you have this book. I don't have that much issue with it, but I just lost interest in it while reading, and I think that's just that. I'll place this in Disappointment. Next is Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard. Red Queen is a dystopian fantasy series about Mayor Barrow, who finds out that she has powers even though she was born a red, or a non-magical person in their world. I'm placing this in okay. It wasn't a full-on bad book. It was okay at best, but it was just so… stereotypical? 
Like, the main girl is a not like other girl's main character who's in love with her guy best friend, but she doesn't know how to tell him. And then she's actually a magical human being, and she denies being magical even though she is. And then she meets this other guy who ends up falling in love with her because she's different. And then she's torn between two guys and they're fighting over her even though she said in the intro that she was ugly. So yeah, this book has it all. Except this time, three guys fight for her heart. Just nice and full on extra if you ask me. So because of all this, it goes to okay. Next is the selection by Kira Cass. Another okay book. This one is just boring again. Wow, I just realized how much bad books I read this year. And what's a bit sad is that these books used to be in my TBR, but anyway, the selection is about a competition to find the best bride for a prince. And our main character, America Singer, I kid you not, that's actually her name, is our main character. Honestly, America's name is probably one of the worst names in YA, that I actually prefer Mare Molly Barrow from Red Queen. Like, America Singer? <laughs> Are you kidding me? But anyway, America doesn't want to participate because she has a boyfriend behind her parents' back, and she doesn't want to go with some random guy because she knows that she might break her boyfriend's heart. So she does it anyway because there's reward money and food. And there you have it, the exposition. Like Red Queen, it felt stereotypical and unoriginal. Like, it sort of felt like a replica to Hunger Games, but this time there's just no killing and just some random prince falling in love with you. Next is The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. Finally, an actually amazing book. This goes to new favorite. The Inheritance Games is about Avery Grams, a high school student who inherited literal fortunes because of a will made by a billionaire named Tobias Hawthorne. Avery gets pretty suspicious about this, and it leads her to an investigation as to why Tobias gave her everything. This book is a very solid one. The writing style is amazing, the plot is solid, and the plot twist is also incredible. This is a mastercrafted mystery if you ask me, and overall probably the best book that I read this year. Next is The Hawthorne Legacy by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. Even though I did enjoy The Inheritance Games, The Hawthorne Legacy, or the book that came after it, was a disappointment. It was a mess, to say the least. The masterfully crafted mystery from the first book disappeared, and became so complicated that I just didn't understand what the plot twist was anymore. So many characters were being introduced and thrown at you that you just can't keep track anymore, and it's just crazy. The characters that you love from book one are now changed, and they for some reason became more annoying than fun, an example of which was Jameson Hawthorne. Even Avery herself changes, and I just don't know what's happening anymore. It's a mess, and that's all I'm going to say about this. Next is Chain of Gold by Cassandra Clare. Chain of Gold is the first book in the Last Hour series that follows James Herondale, who has demonic powers thanks to his parents Tessa Gray and Will Herondale from the Infernal Devices. This leads to an adventure with his potential love interest Cordelia Carstairs, who by the way is by far my most favorite character here, and it ultimately results to a demon vs Shadowhunter war, just like what happened in the City of Bones. This book is pretty good, but I didn't fully finish it because of how thick the book was. There's so much to unpack thanks to it, but overall, I ended it with a positive note, so I'm placing it in love. Next is A Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson, a pretty good book that belongs in love as well. Elizabeth Scrivener is a librarian who is framed up for a murder, and this leads to her trying to prove her innocence with the help of a warlock named Nathaniel Thorne. The writing of this book is a thing that I want to praise. It's neat and straightforward, and it made the book more enjoyable. The only aspect that I didn't really like was the pacing, because the pacing dragged the book for me. But overall, again, it's a pretty good book. And last but not the least is War Cross by Mary Lou. Currently, I'm reading this, and so far, it's a pretty good book, so I'm placing this in love. This follows Amika Chen, who was tasked to go undercover in a Warcross game by the owner to find a criminal inside the games, with the reward of a big sum of cash to say goodbye to all her debts. Coming from Mary Lou's other series called Legend, I had to admit, she really improved when it came to the writing, and I was able to connect a lot more with Amika through it. I find it really admirable, and until now, I'm still enjoying this book. So those are all the books that I read this year. How about you? What's the best book you read this 2022? Let me know in the comments down below.